Hey, you. You're finally awake. Bet you thought you were watching YouTube, right? Walked right in on a hundredth episode special. This is Girlfriend Reviews. I used to be sweet on a boy from here. Wonder if he's still making videos with those office memes mixed in. <coughs> End of the line. A gamer's last thoughts should be of home. So, this isn't a review of Skyrim. This is a review of what it's like to live with someone who plays Skyrim. And the hundredth episode of Girlfriend Reviews. Thanks for watching all these years through funny and sad. Making videos for you guys has been the greatest honor of our lives. Girlfriend has wares if you've got the coin. And I also have this limited edition U2's figurine that is available now for a short while. Oh! The reason we chose Skyrim to be our centennial celebration is because it's easily our most requested game. All those other times I said something else was our most requested game, I was lying to you. But lying and Bethesda games go together like an arrow to the knee. You see those mountains over there? You can go f*** yourself. Fallout 76 has 16 times the go f*** yourself. And one of the great things about having a fully dynamic game engine is, it just go f*** yourself. <laughs> It's not, I'm not kidding. The reason I chose to ignore those Skyrim requests and watch my boyfriend play 99 other games instead, some of them twice and one of them bug snacks, was simply because before we even started this channel, I'd often think that if I had to watch my boyfriend ride that wagon, run from that dragon, sneak past that bear, funny basket on that head, put those points into that magic tree, regret putting those points into that magic tree, put these points into that archer tree, then give every animal he meets on the way to High Hrothgar that slow motion stick up the ass one more time, I'm gonna want to throw him off High Hrothgar. <sighs> Does anyone know how tall this mountain is? That right there is Skyrim. You wanna talk about Skyrim? I've been dying to talk about Skyrim. I got boxes of Skyrim. Which version were you guys requesting specifically? Cause I said Skyrim is the 100th episode, not the next 100 episodes. Now pick one. Is it VR? You wanna know what it's like to live with someone who plays Skyrim VR? Oh my God. <laughs> No, an open world RPG like this is really meant to be played on a nice PC using keyboard and mouse. The problem with Skyrim on console is that controllers just don't have the inputs required to fully enjoy a Bethesda experience, such as the N, E, X, U, S, M, O, and D keys, which the Dragonborn is gonna need to fix almost everything. For example, let's try regular old Skyrim without any unofficial patches or mods made by the community. Okay, who can tell me what's wrong with this picture? Take your time, I'll give you a hint. If you look closely anywhere on the screen, this is absurd. Now let's spend an entire weekend downloading stuff from strangers. Some files ask for permission to make changes to your computer, just say YOLO, and we're ready to try Skyrim with mods. I know what you're thinking. It's subtle. So I've invited Nexus mod user Hentai Bukaki one to tell us about the thought process behind making Skyrim mods. Mama! Basically, if a game can be modded, there'll be at least one guy who says, I'm gonna make some weird shit. Luckily, my boyfriend has never installed any big booba on his computer. However, obsessively installing normal mods is the worst part about watching him play Skyrim. I nearly fell asleep when he gave me a tour of the files. It begins innocently enough with quality of life modifications to the game's more outdated features, such as the painful user interface. I think it's a count as a key. No, it doesn't. Helgen keep key. It's miscellaneous, maybe. Which doesn't seem outdated as much as it seems like Bethesda was counting on modders to do the job for free. And someone did. And 24.5 million people downloaded it. And somewhere, the devil is figuring out a way to monetize the giant figures being generated by the unpaid labor of consumers and market this user-generated content as a selling point. So the community will improve everything from sound to visuals to performance for the devil, then the community will buy the improvements they made from the devil. <laughs> 
Then my boyfriend installs the other essential mods, such as a whistle to call your horse. Oh, that's loud. That's loud and long. Oh, there it comes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and a texture to turn mud crabs into Zoidberg. That's amazing. The important thing is I'm meeting you. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the core gameplay in Skyrim transitions from going on quests. If, if you're, you're looking for extra now. work, talk to Vex or Delta. I'm literally doing that right now. <laughs> Exploring the countryside. Bug catching. Wee. Oh, oh Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> and shooting slow-mo buttholes. Ah. Into launching Skyrim, confirming that your mods are working, closing Skyrim, browsing for a new mod, downloading the new mod, installing the new mod, launching Skyrim, confirming that your old mods are working with the new mod, and repeating this hundreds of times until you A, finish installing every mod you wanted, then realize you no longer want to play Skyrim, B, continue installing mods for no real reason until you break Skyrim, then realize you no longer want to play Skyrim, or C, start installing big titty anime mods, then realize you no longer want to play Skyrim with both hands and disappoint your parents while the family computer mines crypto for a criminal because you infected it with malware when you downloaded schlongs of Skyrim, you goofy little pervert. Let me guess. Someone stole your sweet roll. So, yeah. I never wanted to review Skyrim because even though I've watched my boyfriend play it a dozen times, the only parts of it I could really review were the endless loop of starting over to try a different character class who ends up becoming a stealth archer anyway, <laughs> and the all too necessary chore of trying to modify Skyrim into the masterpiece it supposedly is without it looking like a slideshow and burning down the house. But you know what? I'm glad I watched him do it all again for our 100th episode, for it was on this playthrough that my boyfriend finally managed to lockpick the only door in Skyrim that leads to my heart. Ah. It's a metaphorical door. The actual lockpicking needs to stop. Oh. Oh. All my boyfriend had to do was simply walk up to Sprinkles McPussy Boots' horse and say these unforgettable words. Set scale 0 0.3. Oh! Ooh. <laughs> I love it! Yeah! Look at him go! <laughs> All right, guys, thanks again for 100 episodes. We definitely couldn't have done it without your support. Hopefully by episode 200, The Elder Scrolls VI will be out. In the meantime, please enjoy this word from our sponsor. Hey, you, you're finally at the ad read. This is Dr. Squatch. I used to be a stinky man before I started using their natural soaps for men. Wonder if they're still making those deodorants without aluminum mixed in. I know what you're thinking. How can these soaps and hair products that use natural ingredients like honey, oats, beer, and goat's milk actually work? Watch your tongue. You're speaking to Rayloff of Riverwood, the best smelling Nord in all of Tamriel because I wash my beautiful, manly body with Dr. Squatch watch. My favorite bar is the Grapefruit IPA, although I'm usually more of a mead guy. And how do you think I keep my pretty braided hair looking so luscious? It's Dr. Squatch. I use their shampoo and conditioner and all the ladies love getting a whiff of my tea tree scented locks. My scalp has ceased its unfortunate flaking as well, which makes it easier to focus on the Stormcloak Rebellion now that I'm not so itchy. I could go on and on about the manly wares from Dr. Squatch, but uh-oh. End of the line. You can try it for yourself using the link in the description, but don't forget to use code DSQGFR. New customers can get 20% off on orders of $20 or more. Huh? I'm going to find whoever did this. Must be the wind. <laughs> <laughs>